smelly degenerate gamers from around the world rejoice. But the next instalment into the Dark Souls saga is finally here to bless not only our gamer souls, but the entirety of the gaming universe. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> With enough new, intense, and challenging content to have you saying, hmm, maybe if I complete this one and get the platinum trophy, my dad will finally say he's proud of me. Now, um, I don't currently know what I'm going to call this video. Um, probably something extremely clickbaity, like, you know, Elden Ring ruined my life! Or, you know, just something... <laughs> just something terrible, and I'm sorry. I tricked you, alright? This isn't a negative review of the game, but instead, it's me... <laughs> Highlighting some of the worst aspects of not just Elden Ring, but the From Software games as a whole. Do you get it? I'm in the hole. Do you, do you get it or do you not get it? F you. If you don't get it, f off. Because let's face it, this game is basically the exact same as all of these games. And in my opinion, that's the series' biggest strength, but it's also it's the biggest weakness. <laughs> For example, once again, we've got the exact same puzzles and side quests that are so nonsensical that it just completely saps any fun and challenge out of trying to fucking figure them out yourself. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what kind of Sherlock Holmes slash Detective Pikachu slash fucking young Sheldon motherfucker is figuring these things out, but it sure as fuck isn't me. Uh, bazinga. <laughs> And they've once again outdone themselves <laughs> with this new multiplayer system. An online co-op system in 2022 that requires I first go purchase some crafting equipment, then fucking go off into the forest like some sort of hobbit warlock, and then collect special magical flowers to then craft <laughs> an online invitation. And look, all these criticisms, they come from deep within my Elden Plums. I really do care about these games. I've played them all, and I've loved them all. Even, <laughs> even this one. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. And because I love these games so much, it makes it more and more frustrating to see these outdated and tedious features returning with each new title. Game design features that I like to refer to as stinky features. But, but more on that later. Right now, I'm gonna hit you with a spoiler warning. ka -chow. If you haven't played or completed Elden Ring yet, <laughs> I'm probably, almost definitely, gonna be spoiling some of the later game bosses, areas, and stuff. So if you're some kind of yellow-bellied coward and you're worried about seeing stuff, please avert your precious gamer eyes now and skip the video. Elden Ring has managed to not only bring back veterans of the Dark Souls series, but also a whole heap of new players. If you take a look here, you can see that this number is larger than this one. And since its release, this player base has split into two distinct camps. key The first, a much larger camp, saying this game is an absolute 10 out of 10. It can do absolutely no wrong. I wish this game would fly me out to Barbados and cover me in essential oils and then rail me like a cheap hooker. And then a second, much smaller camp, saying this game is too challenging and confusing for new players. I feel unwelcomed. Please cover me in gasoline and throw a zippo lighter as hard as you can at my penis. <laughs> and then there's me, down here, in my camp, and oh no, I don't think I've, oh, I don't think I've got all the pull things. <laughs> Now I can't go after Elden Ring without first talking about where the series all started, Demon Souls. 
and I can't talk about Demon Souls because I never played it. Dark Souls 1 was my introduction to From Software, and I, like many other hardcore gamers, regard it as one of the best games ever made. <laughs> oh, wow. God. I forgot how fucking terrifying this guy was. So please, just for a moment, sheath your very unique plus 10 rivers of blood, and also put your foolish ambitions to rest, because it's time to take a trip back in time to September of 2011. Surprisingly, Dark Souls 1 was actually pretty unknown when it initially released because it was from Japan and it wasn't called Final Fantasy. But with some pretty genius marketing, this game quickly gained a reputation for its new approach to gaming, i.e. it was hard as shit. Oh god, another one. What could go wrong here? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> you dumb. Oh! We go again. Round two, bud. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. All good. Fucking round three, baby. Let's go. <laughs> oh, the fuck thing. No! Oh my god, I hit my life. Take a look at the game box, for example. Now, to be honest, <laughs> it's pretty boring. Dare I say? It's quite shit. And on a side note, game boxes never used to be this boring. They actually used to be like really cool and, and vibrant and arty and stuff, as you can see here. There's actually a really good video by one of my favorite YouTubers, Nakey Jakey, who, you know, if you've seen his videos and then you'd seen this one, I obviously took a little bit of inspiration from. I mean, having a green screen and talking about video games it's just a good idea anyway you should go watch all of his videos and listen to his music because he's really talented and he's a he's a wonderful lovely man he's so handsome look at him won't wait, go watch his stuff don't watch my stuff this is terrible anyway if you were to flip that bitch over you'd be greeted with this in big bold french letters it said prepare as prepare as a Ooh. Which roughly translates to, prepare to die. And it also said a whole bunch more crazy shit in, <laughs> in French and in English. I don't know why we had the French ones, but we did. The point is, this was super unique for the time, and especially for RPGs, as for the longest time, they pretty much all stuck to the exact same formula of, my word, uh, Hero, you you truly are the the greatest man who ever lived. You you surely have a huge penis, and no one would dare stand against you. Uh, please save our kingdom, and then and then take me to to Barbados and uh, fucking dunk me, dunk me like a, a large hobnob into <laughs> into, a, into a large vat of essential oils. And then f me. So you best believe that when 14 year old me saw this and then saw this, I couldn't wait to jump in. Once I'd finished shitting my pants. <laughs> and it was hell. I hated it. <laughs> there was no option for co op in sight. I had no idea what was going on, where I was, why is my skin falling off in the game and in real life. And then you enter this big, like, ominous room, and it's all manky and shit. And oh god, I've got a bad feeling about this one, Goose. Uh, and then fucking <laughs> Lizard drops down off the top turnbuckle. And I was just like, excuse me, I'm a little fat English boy. I think I might have bought the wrong game. And then she proceeds to murder you over and over again until you realise you're supposed to be running past her, dumb dumb. <laughs> I'm not having a fun time. And so you take the game back the next day and you say, please, may I have a refund? And the guy says no, because <laughs> this is the 47th time this month that you've tried to refund a game that you have somehow completely covered in scratches. <coughs> And so you march your 14 year old cracker ass back home and force yourself to give it one more go. And then you proceed to have the best gaming experience of your entire fucking life.
So you may be now thinking, what was the point of all of that? And for the life of me, I don't know. But this was also where I was first introduced to From Software's aforementioned stinky features. An incredibly confusing and restricting multiplayer system, which would literally have me and my friends stood around fucking watching the paint dry, just waiting for each other's summon signs to show up, only to eventually get summoned and then just feel so unwelcome. Oh wait, oh whoa, whoa, don't try to use this. No, this is just for the chosen one. Only the chosen one can use this, and he can only actually use it once you leave. So you should probably leave. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, slow down, buddy. You can't open this. No, only the, only the chosen one can open up this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think this is? <laughs> get out of here. It's about time you got out of here. And also, a quest system that is completely unique to just from software games. And it's for a reason. And it's, <laughs> it's not a good one. <laughs> you really go all in with the no hand holding of the player. Because look, you're a strong, independent, undead. And you don't need no man. Guys, queen, slay! Slay! Slay your enemies! Ruler of one of the realms of men! Slay down those that oppose you! And they also just absolutely love the very cryptic NPCs that just say like the weirdest fucking shit ever and then just vanish and you don't see them again for another 15 hours and then when you do they've got a bug on the head and they've gone mental and they're like trying to fucking kill you and you're just like oh is this <laughs> is this dark souls or is this fucking is this game of thrones I, 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 i'm just so captivated right now and i have I know what's going on also, I have, I, I'm aware of what's going on. And these features, they actually got all the way back to Demon Souls in 2009. And so if you can imagine for a second that Demon Souls is in fact a delicious cake. Is it cake? Whoa. It's cake! So dumb. It's one of the best cakes you've ever had. You hope that they remaster this cake one day for the PS5. But for some reason, the developers, they farted on it. And that fart, it symbolizes the multiplayer and the quest system. And you shrug it off because this is an old game and all old games had stinky features. And with each subsequent release, we got pretty much the exact same cake. You know, with some slight improvements to the cakes, its controls, you know, its graphics were improved, the cake's graphics were a bit better. And no complaints here, I mean, this formula is amazing and does not need to be changed. And with each new game, we would also chuck a few cherries on it. Some extra features that wouldn't change the main game, but just add a little bit more to the experience. Things like in Dark Souls 2, we got power stances, noise. And then later in Sekiro, we got a grappling hook and a brand new setting very nice. And in Bloodborne, I got to live out my personal lifelong dream and beat up a guy in a wheelchair. <coughs> but once again, all of these beautiful experiences were soured by the return of the stinky features. And with each new entry, I'd have my fingers crossed just hoping that Miyazaki wasn't going to fucking Dutch oven this next one. Which brings me to this absolutely beautiful and a fucking mahoosive Elden Ring cake. It's a wonderful cake, it's the best one they've ever done. It has its own distinctness, and yet it still has that classic Dark Souls feeling. Ooh. Warm it up. Here comes a big f***ing slambo. <laughs> what the f*** is that? That top note, that cream. Holy fuck! Mmm, <laughs> that's a ten. Christ, he's a bloody big fella, isn't he? Shit! Shit! No! <laughs> <laughs> The stinky features have once again returned. Do you know what though? I'll be honest, you probably won't even notice them. Because you can forget a few measly cherries on top, like in the previous games. Here we've got the whole fucking vineyard just fucking smashed. 
And now we're talking cherries. You want a rich, densely packed, open world with lots to see and lots to do? Well, how's about f***ing seven of them all smashed together? You want a really cool goat horse hybrid to help you traverse that open world? Well, hop on, head. You want to have sexual intercourse with this strange blue woman with four arms? Well, you can. And everybody on Reddit, just eat. <laughs> just chill out. Do you no longer want to have to do an American Ninja Warrior style run back to the boss room every single time you die? Well, say hello to the Shrines of Marika, aka the Shrines of Mariah Carey. Because, baby, all I want for Christmas is to spawn outside the boss room. You want a brilliant, shiny new combat system with unique and visually impressive spells and abilities? Well, inspect her my Patronus, Ronald Weasley, because Miyazaki and his pet cat have fucking nailed it. Now, forefathers, one and all, bear witness, because it's time to complain about Elden Ring. <laughs> Again. That works. <laughs> I do have some minor problems with the game, like the overall balancing and leveling and and a strength is now shit issues. And also the repetition of the dungeons and a lot of the other content. Because there's some really cool and interesting boss fights in this game that are just repeated way too many times. And it's to be expected and actually pretty acceptable in such a large open world RPG. But I think in more than a few cases, less is certainly more. Good. Alright. Well this, I've, I've cocked this up, haven't I? Feels like it was easy to do as well. All right, we're fighting again. Are we fighting? Oh, no, he's off. He's off up there again. Good. Okay. Oh no, he's flying. He's going up. He's on the thing again. Okay. This is. This can't be right. <laughs> is this? Okay. I think I fucked this up. I think at this point I've done more than enough complaining. What would I do to improve the series moving forward? And I'll start with probably the worst part of this game, the stinkiest feature, if you will, the multiplayer, and more specifically, the co-op. And I will say, when the co-op is actually working, it is amazing, and it's been a highlight throughout the From Software games. There's nothing better than seeing your friend get ragdolled into the air only to get power bombed into next week by some fucking crazy demigod. It's brilliant. But as I've said a million times, everything surrounding it is not. And this game, as many of you will know, can be frustrating at the best of times. And so it just baffles me that we're still using the multiplayer system that wasn't received well back in 2009. It's like there's some Terminator style cyber war. We've got to ration out all the good multiplayer so that, you know, John Connor doesn't come back and fucking suck everybody off. <laughs> I've not seen the movies. I'm just assuming that's what happens. First off, get rid of this. And I get it, it's Dark Souls. It's iconic. It's summoning. Ooh, but fuck it off. Secondly, I'm a glowing man. I don't want to be a glowing man. This is Fashion Souls. I want my boys to peep the fit in all of its glory. And I understand that it's so the invading player can clearly see who he has to kill. But wouldn't it be so much cooler if the summoned player only began to glow once the invader had already invaded? And even better, don't even tell us the player has invaded and have it so the summoned player begins to glow as the, as the as the invader gets closer like fucking Frodo's sword when there's hot milfs in the area you can fucking have that one for free Miyazaki you <laughs> and now probably the biggest one for me make it so everybody can rest at the bonfires for one wouldn't it look so fucking cool with all the tarnished heroes just resting around the bonfire chopping up the shit with the boys and for B it would save us so much more time for activities you like black and boy? How it is now, you've got to leave the game so the, the hearse can even rest at the bonfire. He rests at the bonfire, you go through the loading screen, then you just stand there like a dickhead for, you know, 30 seconds. You put down your summon stone again, once he's finished resting, then you get summoned again, and then you go through another loading screen, and then now you're in the game. 
I mean, I don't feel rested after that. I feel like I just did a fucking... That was a lot of work. And also Numero 3. 3. I'm doing a 3. Numero 3, Port Favor. Let us fucking keep... <laughs> Let the summon friend keep all the progress and the checkpoints that you both work to get. And that's obvious. And that's obvious. I shouldn't have even said that one. That's obvious. Also, if me and my bud defeat the boss, don't return me to my original world. We're still f***ing playing together. As it is now, I've got to go through another 7 million loading screens when... What, what are you doing? Similarly, if the host dies to the boss, don't return me to my own world. Spawn us both back at the shrine of Mariah Carey. And that one was obvious. Shouldn't have even said that one. And finally, I want to talk about the questing in this game. And now I am a bit worried that this very dumb video has gone on for way too long. So I'll try to keep this part short. And it has to be said, the main story progression has improved massively this time around. Now once again, the game doesn't actually tell you where to go, but through a very clever use of visual storytelling, it actually tells you where to go. Now my monkey brain doesn't understand it at all, but I did always seem to be on the right path and it all felt very intuitive. It was brilliant, it was very cool, I loved it. However, the fucking side quests are the worst they've ever been. And not for the content, the stories here are actually really interesting, but progressing in these stories is so fucking painful. I mean, a good 90% of them is just medieval hide and seek. We. Oui. As once again, you'll meet an NPC somewhere out in the world and they'll say something very interesting and cryptic. You're hooked. And, <laughs> and then they'll just, they'll either not say it again and so you better fucking write it down, dickhead, or they'll just vanish. They often just vanish. And with this limited information and absolutely no help from the game, you're supposed to then telepathically know somehow where to go, what you're doing next, what the f*** is going on. And in the previous games, this actually did sometimes work pretty well and was actually quite a charming and unique feature. This was because these game worlds were much smaller and their stories were much more linear. And so where it absolutely does not work is here, in the lands between. Now I actually googled it. This map is 80 square kilometers in size. That's, that's like 30 square miles, with dozens of secret interlocking areas that can only be accessed through fucking secret interlocking passageways and weird lifts and fucking weird keys and shit. And also, for some reason, getting in coffins we how the f was I supposed to figure this out? I've completely given up trying to figure them out at this point. I'm like a maidenless homing missile. Controller in one hand, YouTube guide in the other. Like a big dumb heat-seeking nerd on the way to go get my really cool magical blue giant sword that can power up like He-Man. A uh, schnarf. Now don't get me wrong, schnarf. I don't want this game to become Assassin's Creed 10. Please help me, Miyazaki, and hold my hand at all times. <laughs> but give us a break, at least point us in the right direction, or mark a relatively large size area on the map. Give us a give us a couple of pointers. For the love of Turtle Pup Jesus. I don't know where the f I'm going. <laughs> now I'm gonna end the video here. Um, finally, I do just I, I wrote a quest for the game. Um, and you can all just let me know what you think. It's a quick one. Um, but it sort of follows suit with all the others that have been in the game so far. They can maybe add this one as DLC. We'll find out. Let's take a look. Wagwan Tarnished. You need to go find Steve the Wanderer. Ah, e excellent, Traveller. Where, where might this Steve be? How would I know? You're a cunt. And scene.